after maybe you can start there. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Lily, Lily Kankaya, and I'm a national contact point uh, for Horizon Europe uh, in Malta, and particularly for the Maris Kudoska uh, Q reactions, which we'll be discussing today. Um, before we start, I would like to introduce some housekeeping rules. I think you're all fam familiar now uh, with all those online events being held, but please keep your uh, microphones muted. Please know that this session is being recorded. Um, and then we'll share um, the recording and the presentation after the event. If you have any questions, uh, you can put them at any time uh, in the chat box. And then at the end of the session, we'll have um, a question and answer session uh, where um, I can reply to them, or you can just uh, you know, open your microphones <clears throat> and put them and, and ask them uh, directly. Um, I would like to invite you to register to our uh, mailing list. Um, you can visit the mcst.gov.mt website and register from there um, in order to be um, informed about upcoming events, um, partner searches, um, opening of different calls, um, being of Horizon Europe and also of national funding. And you can also follow us on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube by searching Horizon uh, Europe Malta. Um, as a general introduction, the Malta Council for Science and Technology um, is the official uh, national contact point organization for the Horizon Europe program. We are a team of seven national contact points, and we are also a program committee members, uh, and we sit all um, under one roof. We also, manages, uh, we also manage a number of um, Horizon Europe support scheme, such as the PF2MT, which I'm going to introduce um, today. But we also have different support schemes um, in relation to Horizon Europe um, in general, uh, being a coordinator, uh, or else we also have uh, EIC uh, and ERC European Research Council is ERC and EAC European Innovation Council support scheme. And soon we are also going to launch uh, a networking uh, support scheme. So the contents of today's presentation, I will start with the general introduction of the Maris Kudowska Curie actions and the postdoctoral fellowships. Then um, I will continue with the pf 2 mt uh, scheme. And then we'll have the session of questions and answers. So the postdoctoral fellowships. Okay, something happened here. Okay, so the postdoctoral fellowships. First, starting with the general introduction of Maris Kudowska Q reactions. So Maris Kudowska Q reactions is part of the Horizon Europe program and particular pillar one, the excellence one. Um, and what, what, what is common for all the Maris Kudowska Q reactions is that um, they would emphasize on the researchers training skills uh, and career development skills. All the actions are bottom up. Therefore, uh, all domains of research are eligible. Um, all, the, all the actions are international, interdisciplinary, and intersectoral. They provide attractive working and employment conditions. And um, there is a strong collaboration with industry um, uh, and SMEs, uh, with academia, industries, and SMEs. And also there is a very good impact on the actual organization when hosting MSEA fellows. So it's not only for the researchers, but it's also for um, the host entities. There are five type of um, Maris Kudowska Q reactions, the doctoral networks, the postdoctoral fellowships, which uh, we are going to discuss today, staff exchanges, co-fund co -fund and MSEA and citizens. But today we're going to talk about the postdoctoral fellowships. So the postdoctoral fellowships, uh, there are two types. One of them is the European one, when um, um, any researcher from around the world, being European or not, is coming to perform the, 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 the project in Europe, in a, in a um, uh, member state, or else in associated country, 
associated country, they, they, there is a list. Currently, there is also ongoing discussions for more countries to, to, to join these associate, associated countries. Uh, but more or less, these are countries um, for the time being based around um, Europe, such as Turkey, Israel, um, Tunis, and, and so on. Um, However, the program is expanding and is looking uh, into further countries to, to, associate, to associate. And then we have the global fellowships. The global fellowships are for those European researchers or researchers from the associated countries uh, who would like to do their uh, project in a third country. Uh, third country is then any other country in the world, uh, being the States, Australia, or wherever you wish, basically. These are mono beneficiary actions. What does this mean? This means that um, the researcher applies together with the host entity. And as I, as I already mentioned, the researcher can be from any nationality. And what you will need is to have at least one supervisor. You may also have co-supervisors as well. And you can also um, have other participating entities, but they, they won't be officially beneficiaries. Um, um, they will be a partner, uh, associated partner uh, entities, let's say, um, because there is the possibility for during this fellowship to go on a secondment. This secondment can be based um, in another country um, and this entity can join, um, can join as an associated partner. The fellow, the researcher um, can be of any nationality but must have um, the PhD already being awarded by the time of the deadline of the call, which is 14th September uh, this year, and should, have, should not have more than eight years um, uh, research experience after the, after the uh, PhD. But this I would like to highlight that is full-time research experience. So for those uh, that let's say are working on a part-time uh, basis performing research somewhere, um, uh, this, um, this age can be uh, then um, calculated accordingly. The host entity can be academic, so university, or non-academic. Um, um, it can be industry, it can be public entity, NGO, um, any, any entity that is um, performing research. All domains of research are eligible. It's completely bottom-up action. So you have to come up uh, with the idea. Of course, it's important that the idea has to be um, innovative. What I would like to stress is the mobility rule. So if you're applying um, with a host entity in Malta, you should have, and that is also valid for the other countries, uh, you should have not been living in Malta for longer than 12 months in the last three years uh, prior to the deadline uh, of the call, uh, which is 14 September this year. And also another thing that is important that one researcher can apply uh, only with one proposal. What is the duration of the projects? So for the European Fellowship, we have minimum of 12 months and up to 12, uh, 24 months, up to two years. However, uh, now there is a novelty in Horizon Europe that you can add additional six months if the last six months are being performed in a non-academic uh, placement. Uh, so this must be an entity uh, that is not academic. And then it can be increased up to 30 months. For the global fellowships, um, it's between um, two years and three years with mandatory return phase to Europe in the last 12 months. Um, Malta is a widening country, meaning, um, um, uh, meaning that we have uh, another possibility for additional funding. So it's not only the, the main panel of the Maris Kudowska Curie Action Postdoctoral Fellowship budget, but then those, um, uh, all the projects are being scored and um, the, the best ones are being funded from, from, from the postdoctoral fellowship. However, uh, Malta then um, can, can benefit from additional funding of 8 million euros together with other countries uh, for, for this year's call, where again, uh, the proposals are not being again um, scored and ev evaluated, but again, uh, the, the top ranked ones uh, are being selected for funding then. 
Another thing that I would like to mention, to mention is the CEO of excellence. So proposals that receive 85% or higher receive this CEO of excellence and can look for um, additional funding. Uh, the call opens very soon on uh, 12th May. Uh, then you will be able to download uh, the templates. The call is already published on the Funding Contenders portal, and I did provide uh, the link to it uh, in my slides, um, in the following slides. The deadline, as I already mentioned, is 14th September uh, at five o'clock Brussels time. And another thing that I, it's important is that for those um, researchers that um, have submitted last year a proposal and scored below 70% would be not uh, eligible to apply uh, this year. Those, those applications have to wait for um, the year after and will be eligible to apply in 2023 uh, call. Um, the researcher, as I already mentioned, would receive a very attractive um, package. Uh, and I do have um, the details for it. Um, and it's uh, very simply calculated based on unit cost. One unit is uh, one month, but we'll talk about it in the following slides. Um, so for researchers going to a third country applying for the global uh, fellowship, that's important that the researchers have to um, be nationals, EU nationals, or associated countries nationals. And uh, since last year, there is another novelty uh, where the Eurotom uh, program is funding um, additional fellowships. And of course, um, uh, these applications have to be related to Eurotom type of research. And again, have to be from a uh, new member state or country associated to the Eurotom uh, program. Here we are going with, with the unit cost details. So on the slide, you can see um, the living allowance. So this is basically the, the, the salary of the researcher together um, with the mobility allowance. The living allowance though, um, we have to apply um, the country coefficient contribution, which for Malta is 88.1%. So I have already calculated that. And for those applying with motor, this will be 4,475 euros and 48 cents. Plus, you are going, we are going to add here the 600 euros mobility allowance. This mobility allowance is being provided to the researchers just for the fact that you will be moving uh, from abroad um, and relocating. And then for those researchers um, uh, that have family, uh, meaning that um, are there either they're married or have dependent children, uh, additional 660 euros per month is also being um, provided. Then we have another novelty um, here, um, which is related to the long-term uh, leave allowance. Uh, basically, this is to support researchers that, let's say, would have um, um, health issues and will be missing for from will be missing um, from working um, in the institution for longer than a month. Um, then the European Commission can can support these additional costs as well. And also we have special needs allowance, uh, which is um, related to researchers uh, with disabilities. So this is related to the to the researchers' costs. And then we have the institutional costs that go to the, to the host um, for basically for hosting the researchers. And these are the research training and networking contribution of 1000 per month and management and indirect, indirect cost contribution of 650 per month. The research training and networking contributions is to be spent again once for the researcher, um, for organization of, um, um, let's say, workshops and trainings, or for sending the researcher abroad for, for uh, trainings, um, even for the second month's, uh, second month's cost uh, can be charged from, from that type of unit cost. Consumables, um, anything that is needed for the uh, performance of the, of the project. There are some mandatory deliverables. Um, uh, this can be found in the work program, but I have already um, um, listed them here. So we have the mobility declaration, 
career development plan. This, this is a plan that uh, will be established by the researcher together with the supervisor. Um, there is some evaluation questionnaire, data management plan on how you're going to handle the data, and also a plan for dissemination and exploitation of the results, which is also very important um, um, in Horizon Europe general, not, not only in MSEA. How to apply? Uh, all Horizon Europe uh, calls are available on the funding and tenders portal. Uh, I did provide a link in the, in the following slide uh, for you. As I, as I mentioned already, you received this presentation, um, so you can access um, the links. Uh, but everything is being submitted online. There is nothing uh, printed and, um, in, in hard copy. Um, uh, so you just follow the steps uh, through the online tool. What is the application consisting from uh, part A, which is basically the administrative um, data. Um, you will here you will list information such as general information about the project, about uh, you, uh, contact details, view, the supervisor, the host entity, uh, the budget, which is here automatically calculated uh, with the unit costs. So um, as soon as you list the duration of the project and the country, um, everything is being calculated uh, auto automatic. Um, ethics issues and some specific uh, questions, which you also have to, re to reply uh, by simply ticking some boxes. And then we have the part B, which is the actual uh, proposal. The part B here uh, in um, MSC postdoctoral fellowship call is with 10 pages uh, limitation. Then you upload um, the part B is being, um, it's a Word document, which then you will upload in a PDF format. Here is some more details about, about the part B. As I already mentioned, these templates will be available to download uh, as from 12th May. So part B1, the 10 pages in total, consists of excellence, impact, and implementation. And part B2, there is no page limits. Uh, here you have to upload your uh, CV. Um, again, in the template, you will find the format which uh, you can follow. Um, then the capacity of the participating organization uh, and the commitment letter um, of the associated partner. And this is valid only for the global fellowship and also for proposals um, um, in the European Fellowship with non-academic placement. The non-academic placement, that is the additional six months. So if you would like to benefit from that, you also need this commitment le letter. Here we have the award cr criteria. So what are um, the external evaluators uh, going to look for? Um, Basically, uh, the evaluators are, um, as I mentioned, externally appointed. Uh, they are not members of the European Commission, but they're um, uh, experts in, in the specific research field that you're applying, uh, coming from different countries as well. Um, and they will judge your scores, uh, your proposal, um, um, based on excellence, which, is, um, have, which has 50% weighting here. So the excellence is the most important part. But of course, even the other sections as impact 30% and implementation 20% are very important. And um, in the template um, of part B, um, you, will be, uh, you will see instructions for each one of these subsections. So you will see quality and pertinence of the project research and innovation objectives. And then you will see the specific, um, specific um, explanations on what you should include here in, in the template. Then the proposed methodology um, for each one of the sections is the same. You will see um, explanations and clarifications and suggestions on what you have to include here. Then we have quality of the supervision, training, and the, the two-way transfer of the knowledge, uh, quality um, of the researcher's professional experience, um, then for the impact, we have the measures to enhance the career uh, perspe perspectives and employability of the researcher, um, the um, suitability and quality of the measures to maximize the expected outcome and impacts. 
the project contribution to the expected scientific, societal, and in economical impacts. This is also a very important uh, subheading. And then for the implementation, quality and efficiency of the work plan and quality and capacity uh, of the organizations. Um, I would like to show you um, a video here, which is summarizing again uh, um, the, 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 the um, postdoctoral fellowship call. So. The Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions are the European Union's reference funding program for doctoral education and postdoctoral training. If you hold a PhD and wish to pursue your career in research in another country, why not apply to the MSCA? Submit your own postdoctoral research project. Calls for postdoctoral fellowships are published every year and are open to researchers in all fields of research and from all countries of the world. You will need to submit an application jointly with the host organization of your choice. Who can apply? The MSCA postdoctoral fellowships are open to excellent researchers, including researchers wishing to return to Europe or restart their career in research. There are two types of postdoctoral fellowships. European fellowships will allow you to do research in an EU member state or in a country associated to Horizon Europe, regardless of your nationality. Global fellowships will allow you to do research mostly outside Europe with a mandatory return to an EU member state or to a country associated to Horizon Europe. You may only apply if you are a national or a long-term resident of one of these countries. In both cases, just remember these two rules. You should do your research in a different country to the one where you are currently living or working. Check carefully the specific rules. In general, you should have less than eight years of experience as a researcher since the award of your PhD, although some exceptions apply. Apply for existing postdoctoral positions. Another way to become an MSCA postdoctoral fellow is to apply for one of the MSCA co-fund postdoctoral vacancies published all year round on the Euraxis portal. Check the requirements of the position of your interest and apply directly to the university or organization advertising it. What are the employment conditions? The MSCA offer an attractive salary and good working conditions. Your future host organization will recruit you. Your contract will include a monthly allowance covering your salary and travel costs and social security coverage. Depending on your situation, you might also be entitled to a family allowance if you have a partner or children, a special needs allowance if you have a disability, a long-term leave allowance if the need arises. The MSCA will also finance your training, research and networking activities. What are the benefits? As an MSCA Fellow, you will receive advanced training, acquire new skills and improve your career prospects. You will also gain new international experience and exposure to other disciplines and sectors. You may even have short placements in other countries and experience outside academia. If you need help to prepare your application or have a question about the requirements, you can reach out to the MSCA National Contact Point of your country or contact the Marie Curie Alumni Association. Apply now and join the MSCA community. Best of luck! Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions Okay, so this was just a short video that is summarizing um, um, basically the, the action. I hope it is clear now. Um, here I just have included some links. I'm not going to go through them uh, because you received the presentation, uh, but I have included the work program, the website of Marie Skodowska Curie Actions, um, the call page uh, where you access all the information is already published, but um, uh, you, you, will, you will be able to download the application, the application and uh, the templates and start filling the application uh, as of 12th May. Um, the PF to MT call page, we, I'm going to present now, um, continuing that presentation with more information about it. Uh, uh, how to find the host entity if you don't have already one uh, in Malta. Um, and uh, basically, let's continue now uh, 
uh, with the PF2MT. So what is the PF2MT? That's a postdoctoral fellowship training scheme for incoming postdocs to Malta. It supports the travel and accommodation expenses uh, for those eligible researchers um, uh, and that are going to apply for the MSCA PF postdoctoral fellowship call uh, this year uh, um, with, the, with the deadline 14 September and have a Maltese uh, host uh, entity. It's also important that uh, um, you should already have identified uh, your supervisor uh, by the time applying for, for uh, PF20. The call already opened on 1st April and is going to close on 8th June. Um, and the training, the training will be a full day proposal writing training uh, related to the MSA postdoctoral fellowship call. Uh, it will be held 6th July um, and it will be held physically, only physically, um, in um, our offices in Kalkara in Malta. Um, this is the first time that we are actually um, going to, to do that um, training physically because in the past years, because of the pandemic situation, uh, we were doing it online, uh, but we, we prefer and we think it's more efficient um, if we do it physically. So we decided to launch that uh, travel scheme uh, to support your travel and accommodation uh, to come over and um, be with us for the training. As I already mentioned, you, to be eligible for um, the PF, you have to be eligible for the MSEA um, PF call. Thus, you have to respect the mobility rule. You have to have already a PhD and um, uh, you should have not more than eight years full-time research experience after the PhD. The application is very simple. Um, basically, to just ask you um, for um, the supervisor, for the host entity, um, just a summary of um, a brief of the, of the project idea. Uh, there will be only administrative check. We're not going to judge the idea. We rely on the fact that if you already have agreed with the supervisor, uh, the supervisor is the expert and if it's accepting um, the idea, um, then, then should be of a good quality. Of course, um, there is many, um, many situations where actually um, the researcher is working together with the supervisor to, uh, to even enhance and improve the research idea. Um, for those that have not identified a supervisor yet, um, we uh, have a list of, um, of um, post offers from OTA, uh, and I will show it to you now. Just I want to mention that um, we'll be checking the, um, the supervisor, so it's important that you have already established um, contact with him or her before, um, and not just find someone online and list there without having a contact. And the applications will be funded on first come, first serve, serve uh, basis. Um, let me before I go on, on, on uh, or let, let me continue with, with the financing and then I'll show you the host offers. So the financing is going to work with the lump sum. Um, participants that are living or residing in EU member state or a Horizon Europe associated country will receive 800 euros uh, flat rate uh, to cover the travel and accommodation expenses this is only one day training, full day training. However, of course, um, participants are free to, to stay longer uh, if they wish to, um, and maybe have discussions with the supervisor um, and so on. Uh, for participants residing and living in third countries, um, um, the rate is higher, is 1,200, due to the fact that, of course, um, travel, the, the air tickets are more expensive. And what we're going to do is we're going to send you the 50% of this lump sum as soon as you come and attend the training and provide the boarding uh, passes and um, their ticket. And the remaining 50% will be sent as soon as you uh, submit uh, the proposal. No matter the proposal will be successful or no, as soon as you um, forward us the confirmation email that you receive from the commission that the proposal has been received, 
uh, will then send um, the remaining 50%. Um, please note that you are, the applicants are responsible themselves for the travel and accommodation arrangements. Uh, and also for those that need visa, um, it's your own responsibility. And also to check the COVID-19 uh, requirements to enter uh, into Malta. These requirements have been now eased, but nevertheless, uh, it, it, it's your responsibility to, to check. All these links uh, in, the, in relation to the visa and COVID-19 requirements are available in the um, um, documents um, of the PF2MT, which can be found on the MCST page. And I did provide a link um, in the previous slide uh, for it. So after you receive the presentation, uh, please check them out. Uh, here, yes, how to apply. Here is once again, I have listed um, uh, the call page. It's basically, you will find explanation on um, what is being funded, what is PF2MT, um, and then the application form. It's important that um, the, the, the application um, has to be signed and dated, and this is to be done from the researcher directly. There is no need of signature from, from the supervisor. Um, and uh, everything is to be sent by email to me. Here is my um, email address, and the deadline is noon of 8 June. However, you can apply before. Um, as soon as you apply, it will, it will take some time to um, check the administrative part of the application, and then you will be notified um, if you are eligible or, or not. And if you are notified that you are eligible, you can then proceed with your travel and accommodation um, arrangements. So that's why I would advise you uh, to apply as soon as possible. Mm, just one slide on how we can support you. Um, I am, as I mentioned, the Marie Skudowska Curie National Contact Point, and I can assist you um, with any type of queries that uh, are related to the call, maybe something is not clear, uh, maybe you need further information. Uh, we do provide personalized advice. Uh, we organize a number of trainings and events uh, per year. Um, and also very important, um, we review the applications uh, before submissions. So we can provide you feedback, suggestions, tips, tricks on how to improve the application. Um, for calls that need partner searches or for those, um, um, let's say, applying for the MCA postdoctoral fellowship call that would like to have an non-academic placement, I can also assist you uh, to find uh, such placement. That's again my, my contact details. Now I would just like to show you the host offers uh, that we have uh, from Malta. So basically, um, as you saw from the video as well, Euro Access published a lot of um, opportunities uh, related to Marie Skudowska Q reactions as well. And um, we at the Malta Council for Science and Technology, we also manage uh, uh, the Euro Access Malta portal. And um, here is where you can find um, host offers uh, from Maltese entities. So we have quite many from the University of Malta. University of Malta is hosting uh, quite a number of already uh, MSCA postdoctoral fellows. Um, and also in the previous program, Horizon 2020, um, um, individual fellowship, it was called before. And we also have for the time being um, two host offers from non-academic entities. This can be your host entity uh, for the whole duration of the project or even for the non-academic um, um, replay uh, placement. Um, this is going to be populated further. I'm currently receiving interest from even more uh, entities. Um, so um, please check it uh, once in a while. Otherwise, for the University of Malta, you can click here and you will find uh, quite many um, that are split in different scientific fields. So you can see here and uh, then you can see um, um, by opening each one of those, you would see different uh, supervisors uh, that are interested to host researchers. 
Now I would like to just show you um, just another video, uh, which we try to, to attract you um, to apply uh, with um, Malta. So here is the video. Have you considered Malta as your research destination? Malta is not only an attractive holiday destination and a peaceful place to live, but it is on its route to becoming a leading innovation island. Malta has made important strides in key technological areas by establishing the first regulatory framework for blockchain, cryptocurrency and distributed ledger technology. Here is an overview of the Malta science, technology and innovation landscape. The University of Malta is the highest teaching and research institution in Malta and was founded in 1769. The university is made up of 14 faculties and a number of interdisciplinary institutes, centres and schools, including a doctoral school. The university is actively participating in and coordinating EU-funded projects, including projects of the EU's Research and Innovation Framework Programme and is warmly welcoming Marie Skludowska Curie Fellows. Based at the University of Malta, Takeoff is Malta's first technology business incubator. The programme is specifically designed to help innovators and aspiring entrepreneurs create successful science, technology, engineering, creative media and knowledge-based startup business. The Malta College of Arts, Science and Technology, MCAST, is a vocational education and training institution. Established in 2001, MCAST offers 180 full-time and over 300 part-time vocational courses, ranging from certificates to master degrees. MCAST also actively coordinates and participates in a number of Horizon 2020 projects. The Malta Life Sciences Park was conceived by the country's economic development agency, Malta Enterprise, to provide an international class facility for life sciences and information technology development. It is designed to promote research and development and to spur the growth of the life sciences sector in Malta, building on the base that the company developed in the pharmaceutical industry during the last decade. The Malta Council for Science and Technology, MCST, is the governmental body responsible for research and innovation, R&I, space, science and technology. Being the official contact point for the EU Framework Programme for Research and Innovation and the managing body of the National Funds for Research, namely the Fusion Programme, MCST has a team of national contact points ready to assist you in finding relevant partners, apply for funding or resolve your project-related queries. Furthermore, MCST hosts a Your Access Centre and manages the Your Access Malta portal. Your Access Malta is ready to assist all those researchers that choose Malta as their research destination. Be part of Malta's research and innovation landscape. Okay, so basically you could see our beautiful offices um, um, at the end of this video. Um, the training will be held here. Uh, so um, please apply for the PF to MT and um, please participate. Now, um, I don't know if there are any questions in the chat box, uh, but um, I don't see any questions for the time being. But if something is not clear, um, okay, there is a question. If a proposal is rejected by MSCA, can be benefit benefit by the ERA Fellowship? Uh, yes, as long as it scores above threshold, which is 70%, it goes automatically to the ERA Fellowships. And from there, um, the best ranked uh, uh, proposals are being funded until the budget um, is absorbed, basically. And the second question is, as a recent graduated, I have no research experience. Can I still have a good chances uh, to earn a fellowship? Um, yes, you still have chances. Um, basically what we see in uh, as being funded <clears throat> proposals, there are some that are immediately after um, PhD being awarded, and there are some um, that already have some past um, past experience. 
Um, but the idea here will play um, a very important role and how you would structure uh, the proposal. But yes, you still have chances, definitely, Veronica. I don't know if this replied to your quest to, to your questions. Um, and if there are any other questions, um, you also may wish just to take the floor, raise hand and um, take the floor um, or put it in the chat box. It's up to you.